In this podcast episode, we're going to look at how to write a chemical formula. If you are unfamiliar with common oxidation numbers, or if you need to review oxidation numbers, be sure you watch this podcast episode about oxidation numbers. There are a few simple steps that you can take to write a chemical formula. Let's explore those. The first step is to determine the elements to be used in the formula and their oxidation numbers. We are looking at the chemical formula for magnesium fluoride. So we have the elements magnesium and fluoride. If you drop the IDE and put INE in, we have Mg is the magnesium and F for fluoride. Next, you've got to find the oxidation numbers for those two elements. Magnesium has the atomic number 12, and it's found here in the alkaline earth metals. It has an oxidation number of 2+, plus, which tells us that it loses electrons. Fluorine, on the other hand, is a halogen. Its atomic number is 9. We find it over here in group 17, and it has a negative 1 oxidation number, which tells it gains electrons. So when we apply our oxidation numbers, we indicate that magnesium has a 2 plus, and fluorine has a one negative. That's it for the first step. So let's look at the second step. This step has us figure out what is the subscripts for magnesium. We do this by changing the charge of one of the atoms for the subscript for the other. So the two plus charge for magnesium becomes the subscript for fluorine. And the charge for fluorine becomes the subscript for magnesium. We then end up with the chemical formula of MgF2. Remember that if a subscript is 1, we do not need to write it. The final step you can go back through and check to make sure that your answer is correct, make sure it's logical and that you've done it correctly. Now let's look at some examples. What are the chemical formulas for the following chemicals? The first one is sodium chloride. Sodium is an alkaline metal found in the first group, and it loses one electron to become a positive one. Chlorine is found in the halogens, and it loses one electron. Going through and swapping charges for subscripts, we can write that sodium and chlorine each get one for no subscripts, NaCl. The next one is calcium fluoride. We see that calcium is an alkaline earth metal and it's going to have a positive 2 charge. So calcium is a 2 plus charge. Remember from before, fluorine is a minus 1 because it's a halogen. We swap charges for subscripts. We end up with calcium 1, fluorine 2. So it becomes Ca1, F2, or Ca, no subscript, F2. Let's see the next one. Hydrogen has a 1 plus charge. And chloride is for chlorine, and it has a 1 negative. So we end up with the chemical component H1Cl1, or HCl. This next one, notice that we have a hydroxide, which is one of our polyatomic ions. We're going to need our polyatomic ion chart 
to help us with this one. We know that potassium is an alkaline metal, and it's found here in the first group. So it's going to have a 1 plus charge. And we're going to use our polyatomic ion list here to look up hydroxide. And hydroxide is here. And it's got a negative 1 charge. So we write down the full ion. It's hydroxide. And it's got a negative 1 charge. So we find out that it's potassium, 1. Hydroxide, 1. Or KOH. Okay, and our last compound is calcium sulfate. Calcium is Ca, and it's a 2 plus charge. And sulfate is also in, on our polyatomic ion list. Here it is. It's 2 minus, so it's SO4. It's 2 minus. And we can solve that. Remember, these become our subscripts. So it's Ca2SO4, whole thing, 2 which is also reducible to CaSO4. Hopefully this tutorial was able to show you how to write chemical formulas. Remember the textbook also has several examples for you to go through to help you answer some of these questions where we must find out what the chemical formula is. This is the end of this podcast.